Hi, this is Dr. Cam Orlino, and in Chapter 7 we will look at three new concepts. Inventory as an asset, how it's transferred as cost of goods sold as an expense to the income statement, and finally the FIFO method of inventory valuation. Inventory is an asset. The dollar value of inventory at any given time is shown on the balance sheet. Now revenue is earned when goods or services are sold to customers. Assets are used to produce those products or services that customers purchase. These purchases result in revenue and the assets consumed in the process are transferred from the balance sheet to the income statement as an expense. Expenses incurred must be matched to the revenue earned within the same period. Inventory can be two types, a manufacturer's inventory or the inventory for a retailer wholesaler. A manufacturer has three types, raw materials, things like steel, plastic, or wood, work in process, which are goods that are semi-finished or not quite ready for sale, known as work in process inventory, or finished goods, which are goods completely done and ready for sale to customers. Here's an example of a wholesaler retailer, Home Depot. Home Depot buys finished goods, things like power tools, and raw materials, things like lumber, from manufacturers and resells them. Home Depot does not manufacture anything of itself, therefore it is a wholesaler retailer. The merchandise inventory on the balance sheet is the dollar value of goods that Home De Depot has purchased and is currently holding as an asset on the balance sheet as of the dates indicated. We see that as of February 3rd, 2008, Home Depot has a current merchandise inventory valued at $11.73 billion. Now we look at the income statement for Home Depot for the fiscal year ending 2008. As Home Depot sells its products, inventory is transferred as cost of sales or cost of goods to the income statement. In fiscal year ending 2008, Home Depot sold $47.3 billion worth of goods for that fiscal year. Can you calculate Home Depot's gross profit percentage? If you calculated it at 33.7%, you would be correct. Let's take a look at that calculation. Here I've calculated the first three lines from the Home Depot income statement. Net sales, cost of sales, and gross profit. Notice the, that at the top line percentage area that the net sales is 100%. The gross profit percentage is defined as the gross profit dollars divided by the net sales or total revenue, which gives us a value of 33.65% gross profit margin. Here is an example of the balance sheet for a manufacturer. We see Cisco Systems. And notice the three types of inventory accounts held on the balance sheet. Raw materials, work in process, finished goods. And all the different types of inventory are added up. So we see a total dollar value of inventory for the period of $1.074 billion. As assets are consumed in the manufacture of products or delivery of services, those assets are transferred as costs or expenses to the income statement. Cost of goods sold or cost of sales is the term used to account for the direct and indirect expenses the firm utilizes to generate that revenue. Cost of goods sold is an expense that must be matched to that revenue earned in the period. The formula on page 312 is exhibited which shows how cost of goods calculated. We take the dollar value of beginning inventory at the beginning of the period. We add the dollar value of purchases or goods produced during that period, which gives us the dollar value of goods available for sale within that period. 
the firm takes an inventory, an ending inventory, which gives the dollar value of ending inventory. We subtract that from the goods available for sale, which gives us the dollar value cost of goods sold in that period. Let's take a look at an example. See, the firm has a beginning inventory of $15,000. During that period, another $8,000 worth of goods is purchased. So the firm has a total of $23,000 worth of goods available for sale in that period. The firm takes an ending inventory, determines it has $4,000 worth of goods left in ending inventory at the end of the period, which gives a value of $17,000 cost of goods, which is shown on the income statement for that period. In the last half of the chapter, three methods of inventory valuation are presented in the text. FIFO, or first in, first out. LIFO, or last in, first out. Or weighted average inventory methods of valuation are presented. We will look at the FIFO inventory example. In the FIFO method, inventory that is received or produced first is the inventory that is moved out of inventory and transfer to God's cost of goods before other goods that have been manufactured or purchased later. Let's use the color codes to trace the flow of inventory. First is let's notice the period of time which is the year beginning January 1, 2010. The firm starts with the beginning inventory of $50,000 or 500 units at a cost of $100 each. So that would be the values in orange that you see across. D within the period, in blue, we see the firm purchase an additional 200 units at $170 each for a total of $34,000, which means that the goods available for sale in the period of time, January through December, is $84,000 or 700 units total. The firm over the years sells 450 units. Therefore, using the FIFO method, we pull those 450 units out of inventory. So, and since we had 500 units, we then end up with 50 units left at, at in, in ending inventory. So 50 units at $100 and the additional 34,000 or 200 units at 170 that were purchased. So the ending inventory on the balance sheet is 39,000. The cost of goods transferred to the income statement is $45,000. For the next year, the year beginning January 2011, we continue the process. Our ending inventory becomes our beginning inventory. There are additional purchases and we add those up, so we have a total cost of goods available for sale for that period. And the firm sells a total of 500 units of goods, which leaves 30, 350 units at the 180 left in inventory. And so we see the 63,000, which is our ending inventory balance, the 84,000 is transferred to cost of goods. Use a similar approach to analyze the LIFO example in Exhibit 7.8 and the weighted average method illustrated in Exhibit 7.10. I hope you found this video helpful.